Hi. I'm starting to imagine things more imagine. Because that is the key. I'm starting to understand more of the truth. I am my soul. So I'm starting to get that comprehension now that this body is not me. Okay? I'm starting to really feel that. That me is not this body. I am my soul, always travelling and amid greater and brighter, smaller and dimmer, and of course inside the Great One, who gives me counsel, protects and nurtures me, guides me and loves me. And I love them and all, for it is all love. Feel love, respond with love. Feeling his love was wonderful and happy and funny. This is my granddad Christopher. He left me with the thought, imagine how the full force of God's love will feel. One of God's games, when you're your soul, is you can imagine whatever you want God to be. Both of them, mother and father. When children are playing so contentedly, they're playing with God. Your imagination is God and what you need what comes up, if scary faces come up, you need to feel some fear because you've got some untruths. If you don't know them, then don't have any truths. In my imagination I have Mother God right, Father left. In front of me is the face of my soulmate. Close your eyes. And whatever you see in your imagination is God showing you what you need to know. Lots of twirling around of spirals and all sort of fractured things, wheels turning, There's a planet in the middle, spinning. That sort of stuff. And it looks like a, a ceiling and a floor going on for ages like in parallel parallel to each other like I'm falling Scooby Doo characters bloke and the orange haired girl running mummy I'm scared of a mummy I had some thoughts earlier that I got um, a spirit attachment like a mummified pharaoh or something that may be simultaneously attaching in thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions maybe, of people. And he seems really hard to shift, really patient. Doesn't put up a fight, but just sits there like a rock. You can't get rid of him because there's some sort of emotion we haven't felt. And I want to feel it, God. I want to feel it. I'm starting to feel my face pulling above my eye to the right hand side and in my eyes so I'll concentrate on that and feel that more I'm asked to feel that stronger I'm getting fears of suffocation and darkness, blindness that's how he got into me I don't know I had conjunctivitis when I was a boy a few times. Maybe that, partly, that blindness, not having faith, losing my faith maybe a bit. When I was told I wasn't allowed to cry, well, I shouldn't cry. Blackmailed with chocolate. Yeah, don't cry, I'll give you chocolate. An addiction set in. I do quite a lot to climb up to get the Saturday box with the chocolates in. <clears throat> that would be a little challenge. It's the rebellious streak in me, that's where I had to get my love from. The road, that was the entry point to addiction. So doing that for God's love. And addiction allowed in spirit connection. My right leg's going numb and weird sort of thing going up the shin. Well, this is the first time I've done it in this position and it's it's like it's all over your body rather than just in your face or anything. And I feel like a little crouching mouse. 
if she feels suitable. Like I'm vulnerable and afraid. I don't have faith in God. That God would provide for me and protect me. In a way, I think I know what's coming next, which is probably stopping it, because it's probably not what I think. And just look at what I see in my imagination and go with that. And you know what I'm being by imagination? Like you can close your eyes and sometimes you just see swirly bits, but you can you can paint pictures if you want. You can. And for most of you, there'll be obscene things <laughs> because you you know you've got to go through that stuff and then ask why why did I see that obscene horrible thing you know what what was wrong with me that you would show me that in the presence of God which you always are you're always in the presence of God it's just we shut the doors to it and cannabis seems to pull off these layers and open these doors and then you can see for what it really is. Otherwise, you're never going to bother to do it, are you? You're never going to just sit there and close your eyes. You're just not going to do it. Too much fear stop you from doing it. <clears throat> you have to get the truth first. And once you set on, it, set on the truth for a while and you've got them settled in and you're seeing <clears throat> everything in a new way, then you can sit here and do this with cannabis because it'll open you up. Currently you smoke cannabis and something scares you, it means because you've got a distruth, a misbelief. just exhausted my um, time with God uh, well not really but yes exhausted that emotional feelings and um, stuff for now and now it's time to sort of start bringing it all together making sense of it and continue life <laughs> a little bit wiser until next time so I want to share with you what I will be doing as I go on in life. I've made a list of my addictions a long time ago, but so I kind of know what they are. I know what the bad things are. I know every time I go into addiction, it's because I don't want to sort of face the feeling of what's coming up next emotionally. So, but you know, I'm not going to beat myself up. Because I made a list of things that I believe are my passionate desires. Learning from God, about God and the universe, truth. Sharing my understandings. Singing and playing rhythm. Dancing, moving my body. Drawing, writing, feeling, loving. Nature, observing. Travelling, going to be from A. Problem investigation. And here I wasn't sure, hmm, hmm, if not my own, is this an addiction to want to solve other people's problems? I want to help others. God wants me to help others. God wants us all to help others. 
And I put a question mark, but surely yes. It makes me feel special, I want to be special. I am unique, as are we all. That is enough to feel special. There's no one else just like me or you, except your soulmate, who is your other half. <laughs> if I'm doing something which is my true desire, passion, then that's loving. Then when you're feeling emotions, you know, be open, be loving while you're feeling them. Otherwise you'll, your soul will go like this and won't let anything in. And basically I've just been on a full loop. I've got back to the place where I was when I had my first, if you like, revelation. And I've been through a lot of stuff, a lot of thinking, I went to America. Basically from that point I was, well I, I think I was doing some things which may have been necessary. Because as a result of what I did, going to America, reuniting with my best buddy from, you know, we were like that for years as really young kids, so our souls very connected. By experiencing what I've just experienced was basically our souls are all in God. They are, in every sense of the word, in God or and certainly attached to God as well. We're in God all the time whether we like it or not. Connected to the ground, that's God's connection to us. And we've always got a connection to the ground. You can you can almost get to the point where, you know, everything is for you, the feelings, everything is for you. And events, that's how events will seem to sort of just be tailor-made for you and you think how can this possibly be you know is the whole universe just for me all these people milling around and no all the people milling around are unique souls as well we're all unique souls we have a soulmate who we'll always feel connected to and God which we are connected to in every sense of the way <laughs> and even a thought even a thought of, for me, be a thought of having a fag. That would be enough to bring me away. We've had this personal relationship with God our whole lives. When you know it's God, beliefs are correct and your truths are sorted out, then you remember every time it was God. We've all got the same signature. And he's he, she, always has the answer for your questions, straight away, and it's loving. For people who've got spirits close to them, you know, I don't know. I've never been very mediumistic. There was one time when I sort of felt it, and I closed my eyes, and I just saw all these people, and I just thought, that is too much. I can't take that. So I've been able to shut down to spirit influence. And I know these days I've been a bit sort of mixed up. But I've had a good experience of different spirit feelings. And compared to the feeling of God, you know, there's nothing, there's just nothing like it. He can do things in the sky. He can speak in your head, he can give you amazing feelings, some harsh feelings as well, they feel harsh, the negative emotions. But they need to be felt so that you understand what your soul is. That your soul is this collection of all different emotions. And unless you've felt all the emotions, then you're um, not going to understand your soul and understand that you're not this body, you are your soul. We've known God all this time. God was with us when we were playing as kids. I mean, it's always there anyway, it's just that we block him out. It's like there, right at your right ear and your left ear, enveloped as far as our soul goes. Yeah, you know when it's God, 
there's just no doubt. So if you have any doubt. But then, you know, over the years when I thought, you know, I felt God, it, later on in life, was a sort of, was, you know, after adolescence and stuff, it was scary because of the wrong truths that we have. Our soul has um, an intellect. Humility, those emotional feelings are what's important. And it's those we're denying. And we've been suppressing them for so long that it gets harder and harder to, to choose to feel them. And each different emotion of the soul is, is new. So you're as reluctant to feel that one as you were the last one, even though intellectually you're thinking, well, I've felt these emotions, I've gone through them, I can feel, I can get more of them. And you think they might be getting worse and worse, but they're all pretty much the same in a sense. It's the same resistance or fear or denial. Most of, most of you, us are in denial, complete denial. And that is because of the untruths. So in my past life, in my past life, in this life, in, in, in the past, when I've got really close to God and I've been feeling it, then I just get really scared. I used to just get really scared. Oh my God, that felt strong. Oh shit, what's that? Then I intellectualize it, so you judge it, you see, which you shouldn't do, you should just feel. You know, even going back into the head, you see, is like an addiction. It's like a resistance. But once you get used to that, you think, no, I'll just feel it. And, you know, I felt, I felt quite a few different types of fears, and one of them was, you know, like, a, it was just like loads of buzzing and electric things. It just felt, you know, it was a certain weird sort of frequency to the fear. And so I decided to feel it, and now I got through it. Didn't end up with the men in white coats dragging me off the floor, fainted, nothing like that at all. You know, the complete opposite. And when you're feeling this emotion, you know God wants you to be feeling this emotion. When you're in it, it's like, this is what God wants me to be doing. He wants me to be feeling this emotion. And so you, you, and you have the thought as well, there's absolutely nothing else I'd rather be doing right now than feeling this emotion, even though it's an unpleasant emotion, because you know it's doing you good. It's enabling you, yes. It's, an ena it's enabling your true self. See, to know your soul, we all have that feeling when we think, oh, we're going to die, and that scared feeling of I don't want to cease to exist. Th that's times, that's when you're feeling your soul. When you get to sort of start feeling your soul, and when you do, you know, you're going to know. The, you know, there's no doubt. I had a sadness one about when I was in junior one in primary school, a real sadness, God, that was, really didn't want to feel it. There was so much of that classroom I was blocking out, and I was realising that I was just in a lot of sadness when I was there. And I didn't accept that I would be in sadness. You know, when you've been happy... You can't, you can't kind of face that you're going to be in sadness. So, for all that time, you know, I created some sort of facade to, to cover that sadness. And therefore, wasn't feeling my emotion about it. And I felt that, and I went through it, and it wasn't pleasant. But I've now felt it. I know what to expect. And if I feel a wave of sadness, I'll feel it. Allow the emotions to flow, even if they're not positive. And it's our choice whether we want to continue creating positive emotions or negative emotions. But we need to feel all the emotions of the soul to know the soul. That is our, the teaching that God wants to teach us about our soul. So these events will come up in our lives that will trigger them. And we try and face, force them out. We're trying to fight God. And we fight God by going into addictions, leaning on people and physical things. 
I am now going to take part in what I consider to be my desires and passions. Singing and dancing. Singing with my love for God and dancing for my love for myself. Fade out again And when I look the moon had turned to gold The self-love bit Is the master and with a pupil Cause I'm tired of being alone and I'm tired of being afraid And I'll be going through everything I've ever lost Under the boardwalk and down by the sea yeah. We'll be making love baby under the sea